I'm David Salmanoff, President of the Internet Society of New York. We're here today at the Circumvention Tools Hackfest at the Columbia Law School. I'm with James Vasile. Uh, we interviewed you at the last, uh, that was the Freedom Box uh, Hackfest here. Um, and you were then director of the Freedom Box Foundation. And now you've gone through some changes. You're still quite involved with the Freedom Box project, but from a different perspective, I guess, with the Open Internet Tools Project. So yes. can you explain us to us? Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm not even sure myself. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> you know, we're obviously the Freedom Box is a thing that I, I continue to care about and work on. Mm -hmm. um, but I've started doing um, work not on specific tools, or in addition to the work on specific tools, also on trying to improve the entire landscape for people who make anti-censorship and anti-surveillance tools. Mm -hmm. And at Open Internet Tools Project, we are trying to create structures that improve developers' ability to do good security, to make free communication tools that are secure in a provable way, in a reliable way, um, and that reach users in a more usable way. Mm -hmm. So we've been holding events like this, hosting events like this. We did one, um, a larger one, a couple months ago and we're trying to do them on a, on a rhythm so that the people who make the tools get together and continually talk about their work mm -hmm. and reinforce the collaboration. So at the Hackfest, we have people from many different projects. Like last time you and I spoke, we just had a, a Freedom Box Hackfest, and that was great. Right, also the Freenet people. The free, and, and the Freenet people came yeah. by. Mm -hmm. And seeing that cross-project collaboration just made it so clear to me that what we actually need is a bunch of people from different projects getting on the same page as much as possible mm -hmm. and building things together, building things that naturally work together and that take into account each other's strengths and weaknesses. So getting many different projects in one room um, is great and you can see the collaboration that people are entering. Every time you look at a group, a cluster of people, it's not just people from one project. They're cross, um, cross applying skills and knowledge. Cross pollinating. Yeah, exactly. And and what we've kind of decided is that that's great as a one-off event. It's very productive. Um, it kickstarts a lot of things. But what tends to happen is a week or two goes by, and the work you did here, while, while good, doesn't necessarily get continued because everyone goes back to their projects and back to their jobs and back to their lives. Um, and maintaining these relationships over time is a thing that, that becomes kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. So our answer to that is to host these events more often mm -hmm. to try to get people in the same room um, and make, when they go back to their lives, they're going back to a life that includes this collaboration. And so we're trying to do a bunch of that kind of support for projects. Um, and that, that's sort of hosting events. Maintaining a, a, what you might call an institutional me memory in some ways. Sure. Too. Yes. Right. And also, I guess, uh, uh, discouraging people from reinventing the wheel and trying to we want develop to standardized tools in a more of a modular yes. kind of way. Right? Well, we definitely want to do that, and, and when, when it comes to standards, we, we want to um, inculcate community standards around tool making. So we would, we would like people to build tools to a high degree of quality and, and, and um, ethical standards. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that, I think, is by bringing people together where they can, they can as a social matter, agree on what their minimum ethical standards for tool release are. I mean, th these sorts of tools are the kinds of things we're asking people to rely on, potentially in dangerous situations. Yeah. And so I think we have ethical obligations to do some certain kinds of testing and peer review and auditing of the code. And, and a lot of people don't currently have the resources to do that. Bringing them all together allows us to A, reinforce the value, and B, teach people how to do it, um, and C, allows us to tell them about the resources that might be available to help projects learn how to do this and, and to coach them in peer review and things right. like that over time. Are, are you uh, developing the tools for, for auditing software or for security or, or that type of thing? Um, I wouldn't say we're developing tools for that. What we're trying to put together right now is um, a structure that helps doing peer review. So we're talking about building a peer review board which is essentially mm -hmm. just a group of people who have volunteered to help projects 
do this function, to help them walk through the process. So you have like a good housekeeping seal for open source security software. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a good housekeeping seal. I think it's just they're going to do the the reviews in a very public manner and, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see the review. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe there will be a, a seal that would be kind of nice. <laughs> but, right. you know, we're, we're at the very beginning stage of trying to talk that through and figure that out. And um, Open Internet Tools Project is partnering with some other organizations to try to make that a reality. And that's the kind of support role that, that we talk about playing. Mm -hmm. um, we're never going to be the people that make the awesome tech. We're just going to be the people that try to support mm -hmm. the awesome tech. So we're doing that. We're doing grant making. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, an RFP out now for people who have good ideas and have good projects that need um, funding for their tools. We are especially interested in, in the, the tools we don't already know about, right? Uh -huh. the, the good ideas that have not made it into the mainstream of conversation that we're having and that could use a little bit of help getting over that initial hump of booting into a real project. Right. Is there a, do you have a deadline for grant applications, or do you just kind of it's wait to, till you get a good proposal? Or right now it's rolling. I mean, at some point we'll cut it off when we run out of money, I oh, guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. When we've given all the money away, applications <laughs> see, are closed. And how, what is your funding model, or how do you... Uh, um, We're grant funded. Uh -huh. um, I, I suppose at some point we will accept donations from the public, but right now we're, we're grant funded mm -hmm. um, through grants from the U.S. government, mm -hmm. and um, we're talking to some private foundations about grants mm -hmm. and some other entities about supporting our work. So our funding model is partly get money and then give it away, and the, the other part of our funding model is convince other people to partner with us mm -hmm. by showing value in what we do and then have building large things out of many small contributions. Right, the Unix philosophy, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> small tools, exactly. right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add here? Um, Talk, give us the uh, URL for your website. Openitp.org. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So we have we have a website. We're going to be putting tools for developers um, and information for end users in that channel, and hopefully that will get used by a lot of people and inform their ability to access these materials. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you. It's nice to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs>